Everybody's got to live someplace. Everyone needs some place to be. A habitat's a habit with the creatures of the world. Each has its own community. Wow, there must be a million trees here. Are the trees the habitat we're visiting today? Well, not just the trees, although they are an important part. Hi, I'm Jim. It's springtime, and my friends and I have come quite a ways from home to learn about a habitat that's very important to life on our planet Earth, and it's a habitat we can all enjoy if we take good care of it. Come on. There are lots of trees at home, Jim. Why didn't we look at those? Yeah, why did we come all the way out here? Well, because we needed a forest. And that means lots of trees and bushes and other plants all growing together, naturally. Or as some people say, growing wild. And out here, there are no homes and gardens and lawnmowers and things like that, just forest. Is the whole forest the habitat? Well, yes, but we're most interested in one part of it, the forest floor. You mean like the floor we have at home? Yep, except this one's built by nature, and it even has a carpet. Really? Sure, and nature puts down a new carpet every year. Gosh, we all would like to do that. Let's go take a look. What are these bumps on the end of this branch? I bet those are buds. Don't leaves grow out of them? Yep, and here's one that's starting to grow. See, the buds have a protective covering over them that keeps them from freezing during the winter. Look, I see tiny leaves growing on this branch. They're light green. That's because they're new. They'll turn darker green as they get older. But where's the carpet you were talking about? You've been walking on it all the time. The leaves are the carpet? Mm-hmm. They are nice and soft, just like a carpet. If the carpet's new each year, where does it come from? Well, each spring, the trees get new leaves. And each fall, the leaves all fall down and cover the ground with a new layer of leaves. The leaves make the carpet each year. Where does the old carpet go? That's a very important question. Let's dig down and take a close look at the carpet. Notice that the top leaves are still brown, and some of them are kind of crumbly because they're dry. But look underneath the top leaves. Look at these leaves, they're black and they're just in little pieces. It's kind of wet and squishy in here. Yes, it's damp, and those leaves underneath are decomposing, breaking up into smaller pieces. Now look under those and you'll see what's happening to them. Down here there's no more leaves, it's just dirt. Yep, and what do you see where you are, Abby? The soil's real black. Exactly, because the leaves and other matter decompose and turn into soil. And the soil is black because it's rich in decomposed material, the kind of material trees and other plants need to sprout new leaves and to grow in spring and summer. Look, I put some of the forest floor into this glass box to show you a side view. See the layers? The new leaves, then the old decaying leaves, and the rich soil. The old leaves help make new leaves. That's right, and the new leaves make a new carpet each year. The carpet recycles. Right. Now let's think for a moment about how the different seasons supply the carpet with new leaves. In spring, the trees and other plants begin to use the nutrients from the forest floor to grow. The spring flowers pop up and bloom, and the trees begin to sprout new leaves and grow. Boy, there's a lot going on in the spring. <laughs> there sure is. And then comes summer. The trees and bushes are heavy with leaves. Everything is green and growing because it's warm and there's lots of sunshine. Then comes fall. Who knows what happens then? In fall, the leaves change color and fall to the ground. Great, Megan. And then the leaves decay. So, how does nature put a new carpet on the forest floor every year? How does nature put a new carpet on the forest floor every year? In spring, many trees and other plants sprout new leaves. In summer, the trees and leaves grow. In the fall, the leaves stop growing, change color, and fall, covering the forest floor. And then the leaves decay. In spring, the new leaves sprout. They grow in summer days. In autumn, they fall out. And in the winter, they decay. It happens every year, and nature keeps the carpet new. 
down on the forest floor. Now, before we leave, let's fill in the holes we dug and spread the carpet back. That way we'll leave the habitat just the way we found it. Jim, why do trees lose their leaves anyway? Well, let's think about that. Uh, what do most plants need to grow? Air and soil, sunlight and water. That's right. Now, during the winter, it's pretty cold and dry. And also, there's not much sunlight. Now, plants don't grow very well under those conditions. Now, the plants that lose their leaves, well, they just don't waste energy keeping those leaves alive. Sounds like the tree is saving its strength for spring and summer. Well, sort of, but we wouldn't say it quite that way. What we say is, this is one way that trees and shrubs adapt to the cold weather and are able to survive the winter. Is that how all plants survive the winter? Well, no. Here, take a look at this plant. Now, this is called false garlic because it looks very similar to a garlic plant. Let's just dig this one up very carefully. Now, look at this. Looks like an onion. Smells like one, too. Well, they're in the same family. This is a bulb. Do you know what bulbs do for plants? No. Well, they can serve as underground warehouses where plants store up the things they need to grow quickly in the spring. That's like a pantry at home. Mm-hmm. Plants store up nutrients. Remember, we said they don't grow much in the winter, so they don't need a lot of food. Now, plants that store up nutrients in bulbs and roots grow back every year. Do all plants have bulbs? No, all plants don't have bulbs. Some plants die when the weather gets cold. But before they die, they drop seeds on the ground. And those seeds come back as new plants the next spring. And these are some ways that plants adapt to the changing seasons. Now, let's carefully replant this one. How do plants live through the winter? Some plants lose their leaves. Some plants survive underground as bulbs and roots. Some plants produce a bunch of seeds and die before winter. The seeds grow into new plants the next year. Some plants their leaves will shed after they grow so high. Others have roots and bulbs or drop their seeds before they die. And when the winter's over, life begins again in spring down on the forest floor. Now, we've talked about how plants survive in winter, but let's think about summer for a minute. Right now, we're standing in the bright sunlight. What will the forest be like in the middle of summer? Well, when the leaves are out, it'll be real shady. That's right, and that's very important, too, because with so many trees around, not very much sunlight gets to the forest floor, so it's hard for the plants that grow below the trees to get the bright light that they need to grow and flower. Is that why there's so many flowers out now? That's right. The spring flowers get plenty of sunshine now. The flowers that need less sunlight will come up later. Okay, now let's see how many different kinds of wildflowers you can find. But don't pick them. That way other people can see them too, and they'll be able to grow and come back next year. Let's see what you found. Oh, that flower is called a phlox. We came here in the springtime especially so we could see flowers like that. Here's a plant that looks like an umbrella, and it has a flower. Ah, that's called May Apple. Later on, it will grow a small fruit that looks a little like a yellow apple. Now, those are called spring beauties, and they come out very early in the spring. That's a buttercup. It's called that because its petals shine like butter. Now, this flower is called a bluebell. See, it's shaped a little like a bell. That's a violet, and it is a very pretty purple. Oh, and look, here's a yellow violet, too. Here's some wild ginger. The root of this plant actually smells like ginger. There must be a million plants here, Jim. Seems like it, huh? The forest floor provides them with everything they need to grow. Even the shade that slows their growth, well, it helps keep the soil moist. Yeah, plants need water to grow. Right. Remember how damp it was under the leaves? Well, the shade and the thick carpet on the forest floor help keep things cool and moist. The sun doesn't dry out the soil here the way it does in open areas. So the dampness and rich soil on the forest floor help a lot of different kind of plants to live here. Have birds and other animals adapted to the changing seasons like plants do? Sure. In order to survive, birds and animals adapt to the changing seasons also. 
See the foods they eat, like berries or tender roots or leaves or insects, are harder to find in winter. So do animals go away in the winter? Well, some do. That's called migration. Some birds, and even the monarch butterflies, go south where it's warmer. The mammals that stay grow heavier coats to keep them warm. Bears hibernate in the winter. <laughs> That's right, bears hibernate. That means they sleep through the winter. Other animals hibernate too, like garter snakes. And those that don't hibernate are a lot less active during the winter, so they need less food. Now some animals, like squirrels, will store up food for the winter. But now that it's spring, there's plenty of food for all. I could see some bugs crawling around already. Now, some bugs stay in nests during the winter. Others stay wrapped up in cocoons. And other bugs will lay eggs and die, the way plants will drop seeds before they die each winter. Now, if we looked carefully under these leaves and rocks, we'd probably find some eggs and cocoons and larvae and pupae that are growing into adult insects, the way that uh, the seeds grow into plants. What about the birds that stay here all winter? What do they do? Well, I think if you watch them carefully, you'd find that they spend most of their time looking for food. They don't spend a lot of time singing or building nests or doing other things. And that's why bird feeders can be so helpful for them. Okay, let's stop for just a minute. How do forest animals survive through the winter? How do forest animals survive through the winter? Some migrate go to warmer climates. Some hibernate, sleep through the winter. Some are not very active in winter. Some spend all their time looking for food. Some animals will need to sleep through winter's chill. Some others store up feet or find a place that's warmer still. They do the best they can and wait for spring to come again. Down on the forest floor, the habitat's protected. When we all respect it, cause life is all connected. Down on the forest floor. Now, I put some water in this bucket. Come on over here, I want to show you something. Now take a look around in this area and tell me what you see that's different. It's real dry. Mm -hmm. And it's dusty. Very dusty. And it's full of ditches. That's right. But we're only a little ways from the forest. Why is it so different? There's no trees around here. That's right. No trees or plants. So some of the ground has washed away. That's called erosion. Now come on back into the forest for a minute. All right. Now let's look around here. See, there's no erosion here because the roots from the trees and other plants help to hold the soil in place. It's like if we all took our fingers and put them in the ground and held the soil. But there are other reasons why there's no erosion here. Because the leaves cover the ground. Mm-hmm. Now, if we pour the water onto the ground, let's watch what happens. The water just runs off the leaves and into the ground. That's right. See, the leaves keep the water from hitting the ground real hard and washing it away. Instead, the water just runs off the leaves and soaks right into the ground. Okay, come on over here just for a minute. Now, we'll pour some water onto this bush, just like it's raining. Now, what happens to the ground? The water's just dripping on the ground. That's right. See, the bushes and the trees keep the rain from hitting the ground hard, and that stops erosion also. Now, what would happen if someone came along and cut down all these trees? There wouldn't be a new carpet of leaves on the forest floor every year. That's right. And the rain would wash away all the soil. That's exactly right. The rain would carry away the forest carpet and the topsoil. And soon the plants and animals that live in the forest and depend on the forest floor would have to find a new forest or die. Forests are very important to our entire world. They're important because they're habitats for the trees and other plants, and for animals, insects, and people. They're also important because they conserve our natural resources. They hold water, and they stop erosion. And they're fun to walk in, too. That's right. And that's why we have to protect our forests every way we can. Everybody's got to live someplace. Everyone needs some place to be. A 
habitat's a habit with the creatures of the world. Each has its own community.